Well, hello for you. Um, this is a continuation of the last lesson we had. You'll see it's labeled as lesson 1.5. This is an example that I didn't get to because I didn't want to um, make the video go 10 minutes uh, 10 minutes longer. Um, this should be actually less than 10 minutes. So, uh, we're, the topic we're going to talk about today is changing the period length of a sinusoidal function. And so our goal, I can graph a sinusoidal function that has had its period length changed. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at Desmos and see what, uh, or how we change the period length of a function. So I'm going to pull up Desmos, here we go. And you'll notice that for Desmos you can even have the graph changed into radians. So I've got this going pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2, 2 pi, and so on and so forth. And you'll notice that this is exactly the sine curve and it's going from 0 to 2 pi is one period length. And I could have changed it to graph only one period length, um, but I've got it going a little bit longer so that we can see what we're doing here. So I'm going to take and stick a 3 in here. And actually, let's, let's stick a 2 in there to start with. If we stick a 2 in there, then we can see that it cuts our period length in half. Instead of our period being 2 pi, now we cycle through and it goes to a single pi for one rotation. So if I put 3 in there, it's going to divide our period length into 3. Now this isn't going to be a nice period length um, uh, because it, it's split it into three parts so it's, it's not quite as nice. But you'll see what's happening is that as this goes up, our period length gets shorter. So if I could split it into six, it's going to get shorter still. So putting something in here corresponds to a compression. Now, if I take that away again, and it's just one, if I put something in there that's less than one, like say 0.5, it's going to stretch my period length out. Um, so we divide the period by the number that's in front of that. So dividing by 0.5 is the same as multiplying by two, which means that this period length is twice as long as it used to be. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way with a little demonstration, how do we do this all by hand? So we're going to graph this function, y equals sine of 3x, by first figuring out the period. Now the period length gets divided by whatever this is up here, and we're going to call this thing in here k. So the period equals 2 pi, because that's what it used to be, that was our original period, and we're dividing it by this thing here. So um, in this case, our period is going to be 2 pi by 3. So let's see what this little note says here. It says, the easiest way to achieve this transformation is to mark the beginning and the end of one period of the sine function and then divide up the period accordingly. Choose a scale for your graph that will be easiest to work with. In this case, using thirds of pi will be helpful. So if I can use things as thirds of pi so that I know where two-thirds pi is, then that will help me. Um, so I could have it in thirds or I can have it in sixths or something that would be easy to get there. So I'm going to divide up my scale here and I'm going to do that very quickly. So I've put my scale on here and I've let each two spaces be pi by 3, uh, which means each individual space is pi by 6. Um, <clears throat> and so it takes one, two, three spaces to get to pi, uh, and then we're going to go, um, well, we'll go even further. But this says that our period is 2 pi by 3, so that's our period length. So we've split it into 3. Um, now, we know that this is going to go back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1, so I can put those things on here, and this isn't going to be very straight, but we'll put those on here. These are just some guidelines, because I know I have to go back and forth between, the, that was really bad. I have to go back and forth between those two lines, and I know sine starts at 0, so I'm going to do this in red. Sine starts at 0, and according to this, it's going to end at 2 pi by 3, so it ends right here. Now what we know about sine is that it's got a beginning and an end on the zeros, and then it's got another zero in between. And then in between these two points, right in between these two points, it has a maximum up here, and right in between these two points it has a minimum right here. 
And so I put that on there and then I can follow the pattern. It looks like I go over one up one, over one down one, over one down one, and so on and so forth. So I can keep following that pattern here and carry on for as long as I like. And then I'll just oscillate back and forth between those. Okay, so that's the easiest way that I found to do this is to mark on, first of all, mark on your top and your bottom so that you can go back and forth between those. And that's, this will be especially handy uh, if we have some vertical translations as well, and we'll get into that later. Um, and then make sure that you mark on the beginning and the end of one period. Then you can split the difference, go right in between the two to get your other zero and then when you split the difference again, you get a maximum, and you split the difference again, you get a minimum. And that's the easiest way I've found to do it. Now, what other question can I ask you to do with period? Uh, I can ask you something like this. What is the value of k in y equals cos kx if this is our period? Well, we need to remember that period equals 2 pi divided by k. So in this case, our period is given to us, so we've got 3 pi by 4 equals 2 pi by k. Now we just have to solve for k. Um, we can solve for k by uh, cross multiplying if you wish. So we get 3 pi k and that's going to equal 8 pi on this side. And then if I divide both sides by 3 pi, I get k equals 8 pi divided by 3 pi. The pi's are going to cancel, uh, and I'm just going to be left with 8 over 3. So therefore, y equals cos of 8 thirds x. Now, one thing to remember, if you're actually graphing tan, and we're very rarely going to graph tan, it's not considered a sinusoidal function, just sine and cos are. If you're graphing tan, remember that the period to tan to begin with is pi. So to figure out what the new period of tan is, you would have to do period equals pi divided by k for tan. Okay. Um, and that brings us to the end of this video.